we at the American Sports Liberation Front, not to be confused with the Sports Liberation Front of America or the Liberation Front of American Sports, we at the ASLF demand that baseball be released. It's a God-given right to watch baseball during the summer. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Oh, I've just been informed that there actually is baseball this summer. So, my bad. Now back to your regular programming. Professional baseball started back up. And you may not even know about it. So let's talk about Taiwan, Korea, and even Nicaragua. I'm Ken Lammers. This is Minor League Matters. Let's get cracking. Okay, so the whole coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, uh, COVID-19 thing has shut down everything in the States, right? Just everywhere. All the sports are shut down. Uh, however, there are other places where they've taken care of business, right? And they've opened their own baseball back up. Or, in the case of Nicaragua, don't want to appear to have shut it down Period. Uh, I'm going to talk about Nicaragua and Korea first, because they'll be really short conversations. And then I'm going to talk about Taiwan, the Chinese Professional Baseball League. And that's the island of Taiwan's league, not mainland China. And I'll leave it to y'all to figure that out. It's basic international politics, and I ain't doing politics here. So on the 1st of May, Korean baseball is supposed to start. Tried to figure it out. It's hard to do. Korea's not really been as uh, outsider friendly with their baseball as Taiwan has, which has been amazingly friendly towards uh, grabbing people from the outside and drawing them in. Um, so they're starting on, on the 1st, or about the 1st. And I found this weekend Nicaraguan baseball on YouTube. And it apparently is the German something. It's a German league, the Pomenade League, Pomades League. I don't speak Spanish. I very much apologize. Um, but it's it's the Summer Amateur League, and they're playing their championship series right now. Um, I think the next game is Saturday, uh, if you can find it. I haven't been able to find a schedule or a place where to get it. Uh, hopefully it'll be up on YouTube again, run by one of their local channels, and we'll all be able to watch it. But uh, So keep an eye out there. Baseball from Nicaragua is ongoing. But the gem of it all, so far, has been Taiwanese baseball. And this is where I'm going to go with it. I've really enjoyed watching Taiwanese baseball. Now, they don't have anybody in their stands, although the Rokatoon Monkeys and I think... Uh, the Fubon uh, Guardians have actually put, you know, pictures of people in the stands, and Brokerton put, uh, or the, the monkeys put actual mannequins up there. Uh, they're doing, you know, obviously in the Far East, baseball fandom is done differently, right? They do all the chants and cheers and lots of noise through the game. They don't stop when the pitcher's going to throw the ball and the batter's going to hit. Sound doesn't disappear. They just keep going, right? So, while the game's going on, even though there's nobody in the stands, which, by the way, you get over pretty quick. It takes, like, one game going, ooh, the fan stands are empty, until you're like, eh, who cares? Let's watch the game, right? Uh, this, you know, but they're playing all the sounds and the music and the chants, and the cheerleaders are going uh, as though there's people in the in the crowd Really, they're playing for the cameras, but the cheerleaders are going. So they're there, and obviously that's a difference from U.S. baseball, too. We don't have cheerleaders here, uh, but they do there, and they're doing their business, and the mascots are running around, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and on top of all that, you get the, uh, uh, you know, the game, and the game is being played pretty well. Now, as you all know, I've seen a lot of minor league baseball, and... 
you know, obviously the Taiwanese league uh, and it's four teams to be five next year, but four this year are um, not going to be major league baseball level. If they had a bunch of people that were playing at major league baseball level, the United States would poach them because U S teams can afford to pay way more than the companies that own the teams in Taiwan. All the companies, by the way, in Taiwan are team owned companies, not necessarily uh, locked into a particular location, although I get the feeling they, they have been uh, over the last couple of years. But a team owns them all. Uh, so you will hear their first names and something, you know, their first name is almost always the company's name and then the name of the mascot. Uh, there are four teams, and of the four mascots, one's a lion, one's a monkey, one's a guardian, although when it translates from Chinese, uh, it translates as Titan, but Guardian, I think, is more appropriate because it's a guy with a knight, you know, helmet on. And um, the fourth team are the brothers, uh, which their mascot is an elephant. I don't know the background behind all that. I'm sure you can find it pretty easily. Uh, it is a fairly interesting level of play. I've watched four or five games now. Uh, the problem is, of course, that it starts at 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. their time, or on weekends, it starts at 5 p.m. their time, which translates exactly 12 hours earlier in Eastern Standard Time. So a game that starts 6.30 p.m. there starts at 6.30 a.m. here. A game that starts 5 p.m. there starts at 5 a.m. here. Uh... You know, I'm usually up early enough that the 6.30 a.m. game, I'm good with that. 5 a.m., that's a little rough. Got to admit that. That's a little tough to get to. But I've, I've watched games. They don't. They clearly do not have the pace of play issues and idiocy going on that we do. Because they just play the game through. And so, games take three and a half hours. They take three and a half hours. They take four hours. They take four hours. They don't seem to care which is a good thing, right? The pace of play thing has really done some damage to the United States teams, and uh, we really need to start ignoring that. But uh, I've watched I've watched uh, the Rokuten Monkeys play. Uh, I've watched the Guardians play, the Brothers play, and today was the first day I saw the Lions play. So I'm rooting for the Guardians, and... I got there by the uh, very, very scientific method of looking at the four mascots and going, yeah, that one's the one that's least embarrassing, and I wouldn't be worried about wearing uh, a hat with it on it. Um, I mean, the Rokuton monkey is just ridiculously over-the-top kind of uh, anime monkey type thing. The uh, brothers... It is not bad. The yellow, they're yellow color. Uh, Rokuton's red. The brother's yellow colored, and uh, the elephant's not bad, but it looks it's overdone, right? It's not like what you see with the Oakland A's. Uh, it's more like what you would see with somebody who was trying to uh, impress you with their minor league team, you know, and probably independent minor league team. And the Lions isn't aren't too bad either. It's a lion, of course. Uh, if, uh, if the Guardians hadn't been there, I'd have probably chosen them. But, having gone through this very scientific method of looking at them and going, yeah, that's the least embarrassing mascot, I'll root for them, um, you know, I'm now rooting for the Guardians. The teams, team play I've seen was really rough at the beginning. I'm not sure how much they ran through preseason, you know, uh, before they started the season up. I think in normal preseason times, they started it, and then, of course, coronavirus and all that came, and then it stopped, and then they popped it back up as soon as they had things under control in Taiwan. Um, and so they looked rough on the first day. It was a lot of fielding errors, uh, you know, a lot of fielding errors. Uh, but I will say that at a basic level, they seem to have – better fundamentals than I see a lot of our people in the in Major League Baseball play. You know, when they go down to stop a ground ball, 
they put their knee up behind their uh, behind their glove so if it gets by it hits their, hits them and stops right basic play way we've all been taught when we were playing little league and that and when's the last time you saw that in major league baseball or even one of the minor leagues they're not doing it so i see that kind of thing um they are playing having as the week went on the errors in the field i won't say they disappeared but they went way down right? Not nearly as many errors. Now, clearly their play level is, isn't high enough that they are uh, able to snatch some things you see somebody in Major League Baseball snatch, and I don't think that they are getting shifted as well as you see in Major League Baseball. So, you know, if the ball, if, you know, if the player should have moved a foot to the left, and because he didn't, the ball went past him, because he didn't get that, you know, coach back in the back room looking at all the uh, all the stats and everything and, and the film and telling him, look, when McGillicuddy's up to bat, you need to move six inches to the left, right? I don't think they're getting that. I mean, they're getting coaching, obviously. They've got coaches and all that and the manager. But I don't think they're getting that level of coaching. Um, so you do see some misses that you probably wouldn't see in Major League Baseball. But overall, I think the fielding is pretty solid. I put the fielding at probably double A level, right? Uh, somewhere between advanced A to double A, but probably more double A level uh, than than below. I put the batting at solid double A, right? Lots of home runs, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but the batting is solid double A. I mean, double A plus maybe even. I mean, they're, they're, they're good at the batting. And they also, while they tend to swim for the fences, much like American baseball, which gets a little bit repetitive, um, they also seem to be able to play small ball. And sometimes seem to have to play small ball. I think they're swinging for the fences, just not getting there. And, and uh, because the, the fielder isn't quite as capable as an American fielder or Major League Baseball fielder, they're able to get breaks and get get the bases, and they seem to be able to play small ball better than what I see in a lot of American baseball anymore. They just do. And then you get to the pitching, and that's the problem. You always hear, what's the excuse for not expanding Major League Baseball? Well, the pitching will go down. Yeah, so you still should be expanding at least four more teams probably five, you know, who knows, but, um, they don't, the pitchers in the Taiwanese league, um, you know, you're watching and you're going, why isn't the coach pulling this guy, the starter? Why isn't he pulling the starter? Why isn't he pulling this starters running out of gas and he's on the third and a half, you know, into the fourth rotation with the batters. And then when they pull, the starter you realize why they weren't pulling the starter because the backup the bullpen is oh not so great so what i'm seeing and watching these games is most teams seem to have a few good pitchers but those are their starting pitchers and you know they get a little bit shelled sometimes but generally they hold on pretty well i would put most of those pitchers at about an advanced A level, right? Not really double A. They're not quite that solid. Some of them probably move and kind of level up there at times, but generally I'm seeing advanced A level pitching, which is why you see so many hits and all this sort of stuff. And then when the starting pitcher's gone, it's a lot like the olden days in baseball, right? You don't see really great closers. You know, maybe one team's got one or two here. I really haven't seen them. But the moment the relievers come in, that's when the batters start lighting up the ball. And these pitchers are, you know, A-level pitchers. They're like they're in an A-level league, a single A league, maybe going up to advanced A some. Uh, when they're at their t at their peak, so they're not really cutting it as well 
as the batters are. And, you know, while they've got good feeling behind them, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good when the batters send them out of the park or you know, when they hit them where they ain't, right? But you see a lot more here than you do in American ball where everybody's been tra trained to shift. So it makes for interesting games. Lots and lots of uh, home runs. Many, I think I watched one game and there were 10, if I remember right. Ended up being, and it was a tense game. Going into the ninth inning, um, Fubon was playing Rocket, the, the Guardians were playing the Monkeys. The Guardians were down by one point, 11 to 10, going into the top of the ninth. They were the visitors. And they put people on base. And they came close, and it was really tense watching it. But the Monkeys managed to cut them off and end the game, right? But it's probably the most tense I've ever seen a game that had 21 points already, right? 21 points, that's just a ridiculous number in most American games. And you wouldn't think that that'd be a, a, a tense game, a close game, a hard-fought game. And this was. so. You know, don't be put off by the fact you're seeing larger numbers, larger scores, uh, more runs being being scored. They, uh, they're still interesting games and some pretty big swings. I've seen some pretty big swings in the games, too, where one team will get three or four point lead. The other team will get come back, you know, just back and forth. So it does make for the sport uh, being really interesting. Now, as for the show around the sport, uh, you know, cheerleaders, of course, are cute. Cheerleaders are always meant to be cute or good-looking or however you want to phrase it. Um, and mascots are okay, you know, they're mascots. Uh, although some of them, most of them seem to have the kitty mascot and the adult mascot, like a lot of places do. Uh, the fields themselves look like double-A fields, right? I think they maybe seat 10,000. Maybe I'm I'm doubtful on that to be honest with you, um, probably you know. But still, they look like nice fields. It, 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 this is not your beat up old field. It looks like the fields look like they're pretty brand new, right? And in well well repaired, and if they were stacked full of people, it'd be awesome. Uh, so the fields are nice fields. They look level. They don't look like they have a whole lot of problems. This is a difference. Like when I watched the Nicaragua game, the field was beat up, right? And clearly they hadn't imported any kind of special dirt or anything for their field. The Nicaragua team was playing on a field that looked a lot like the Little League field I played on when I was a kid, right? Dirt was dirt, you know, and the grass was beat up. Well, not beat up. It looked like it was actually fairly well cared for, but it was thin because it had been played on so much, right? The Taiwanese fields are not that way. They look like you're used to seeing when you see an American field, lush grass, well cared for dirt areas, which look like they're specifically, you know, some sort of high quality dirt or something. I don't know. I know there's, there is specific dirt that they use to make baseball fields, guys. Um, the one thing I have noticed that's different on the field is uh, on the pitcher's mound, there is a white rectangle. Uh, going from behind the rubber out towards the bat, towards the batter. And I asked, and this is another good thing, uh, at the time they had, uh, for five or six games, they had English announcers. One guy was Canadian, one guy was uh, native, and uh, it was a pretty good thing. I mean, uh, so I watched with, well, actually, I, I listened to them on Twitter and played the CPL, PBL TV uh, thing on my other screen because it was getting sharper pictures uh, so I could listen to them and of course they were announcing like three seconds ahead of the thing on the CPBL TV so if anything really exciting happened and I was looking away I knew I was able to come back and look you know which is great awesome I love that uh, so uh, you know they I asked them was able to send Twitter messages to them and they explained that the rectangle on the pitcher's mound is a slightly different type of uh, dirt that's finer grain or something I guess meant to make pitching better 
that's cool. Actually, at first, I I was hypothesizing that it was some sort of, uh, you know, Bach thing. You know, that if they stepped outside of it, maybe there was some sort of special Bach rule they had to deal with. But no, it's it, it was some sort of specialized uh, dirt or something for the pitcher, which is pretty impressive. Filming of the games themselves is generally pretty good. They're filming multi multi camera, and you usually are able to. They, it's a lot better than what you see, like if I'm watching minor league baseball on uh, minor league baseball TV, right? Uh, that's usually one or two cameras and not the greatest shooting in the world. They, the Taiwanese baseball is doing a really good job of shooting the, the games. The only problem is uh, they don't have behind home plate and all that. They don't have a way where the camera is not behind the net. So at times that gets annoying, right? Cameras behind the net can just not work right sometimes if you're focusing wrong or something, or if they cannot work right at times. That's annoying, but if that's the worst annoyance I've, in the whole thing, I'm good with it. So if you want to get uh, Taiwanese baseball, you can go... And sign up for CPBL TV. Um, there's a guy on the internet on Twitter uh, who goes at, at CPBL, CPBL underscore stats, uh, who is really helpful and who has a, this is the way you sign up for those of you who don't speak Chinese. And it's not all that hard. I did it pretty easily. It's $30, folks. So even if you watch three games, heck, that's pretty doggone cheap at that price. So I think it's worth doing. Uh, and, of course, you don't have to watch the game at 5 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. in the morning. You can time shift it. They actually, you know, it's, it's like all these sports uh, channel things do. They have it so you can watch it later on. And there's even an app that you can put on Chrome. Again, I refer you to at CPBL underscore stats. Uh, he referred to this stat, to this app, an app you can get on Chrome that will keep the scores from showing. So when you go to look at the old ones, you, it doesn't spoil the scores for you. So you could watch it at noon or whatever. You know, it's a, it's a pretty good deal and a really good price for solid baseball. I recommend it, and I think that unless some other sports pop up soon, um, you ought to go there. I'd also recommend, if you can figure out how to get there, um, look at a Korean baseball, which I expect to be probably a little bit higher quality than Taiwan. Um, but, you know, have to see it to believe it. And Taiwan has been very accommodating. Taiwanese baseball has been very accommodating about getting those of us who are fans from other places to come in and watch. And apparently most of the teams are trying to work out a way to get English announcers for all the games, right? Uh, the monkeys, Rakuto monkeys did five or six games and they stopped doing it. Uh, but apparently there are other negotiations in place for other teams trying to get it to happen. Uh, I recommend it a lot. I really enjoy it. And I think you will too. Having said all that, uh, you know, my normal goodbye is, you know, go watch some minor league sports. You can't really now. So, you know, well, let me say all the stuff, you know, hit subscribe if you like what you see around here. Hit the bell, wherever that is, and so that you get recommendations because I don't put these up every day. This is a hobby for me, folks. I actually have to go to a job job. Well, right now, not so much. But eventually, hopefully, God willing, I will be going back to a job job sometime soon. And uh, I hope you enjoyed all this. If you, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if you get the time and you got a little bit extra money, folks, minor league baseball is amazing if it ever gets started up again. And until it does, you've got Taiwanese baseball right now. Maybe you can figure out how to watch Nicaraguan baseball 
And Korean baseball comes up in a week and a half or so. Think you should have some fun? Go watch it all. Masalama, y'all.